That probably doesn't make many sense to you. Why would you want to eat a form of iron that is not as efficiently absorbed? How about inflammation? Heme iron actually causes a boatload of inflammation. Hi friends. Which one do you think is healthier? Taking iron this way or from food? Do you know what this is? This is called beluga lentils. Let me show you what it looks like. It's like little tiny pearls. And when you cook it, it expands to probably about maybe two, three times its size. And it's super tasty and it's high in iron. Iron is a super interesting metal. Can you believe that that metal is the same material in your nail that holds the wood beams of your house? And this material, iron, is necessary to build your muscle, to grow hair, and to make red blood cells. Now, you're probably confused and conflicted with iron supplements. If you've ever tried them, you know they make your stools black and rock hard. Sometimes it also causes an upset stomach. The good news is you can get iron from your food if you eat enough of the right kinds in the right way. However, you always should check with your doctor before you start or stop any supplements. So let's talk about the 10 best foods rich in iron. Did you know when it comes to iron, food quality is super important. There are two main sources of iron in whole foods, heme and non-heme iron. Now between the two, non-heme iron is safer and I'll show you why a little later. However, what you eat with your iron rich foods or your iron supplement can significantly increase or decrease your iron absorption from that meal. So stay tuned for which foods to eat and avoid later in this video if you want to maximize getting iron from your food. So let's talk about some common sources of iron rich foods and you should really listen to all my points before you make a decision on whether or not you should eat that food. Now, number one, everybody knows is red meat, which includes beef, lamb, bison, pork, and venison. However, what you probably didn't realize is that the different parts of the meat have different amounts of iron. So take, for example, pork. Pork liver has the highest amount of iron, which is 5.4 milligrams per three ounces. Next highest would be pork shoulder, which is 1.2 milligrams per three ounces. That is still higher than pork tenderloin, pork chop, and ground pork, which are all 0.9 milligrams per three ounces. Now pork is actually not really a high source of iron. The iron levels in pork is similar to the iron levels though in chicken. And when you eat chicken, there's dark meat and white meat. Dark meat has a little bit more iron than white meat. But chicken liver actually has the most amount of iron when it comes to eating chicken. So let's talk about red meat again. Now I think the most commonly associated animal for red meat is the cow, beef. But I bet you didn't know that chicken liver actually has more iron than beef liver per ounce. And the average serving of beef is definitely higher in iron than eating chicken or pork. But if you were looking for an animal that was an even richer source of iron, then that would be venison. That's probably why it tastes gamey. But iron is actually a double-edged sword. Meat is an iron-rich environment, and therefore it's often contaminated with pseudophilic bacteria or iron-loving bacteria, such as E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. Do these guys sound familiar in recent food outbreaks, especially in those deli meats? Now, all organisms actually need iron. It's an essential element for life, including germs. Iron is an ancient element. Some people think it allowed life to flourish on earth. In fact, iron literally is believed to have fallen out of the sky from meteorites. Now, iron plays a critical role in human health, primarily through its involvement in oxygen transport and cellular energy production. But the problem is iron is heavy. It's a metal. It doesn't dissolve in water. So it can't travel alone in your blood. If you drop a nail in water, what do you think is going to happen? It's just going to sink. So all your cells, including red blood cells, they actually have proteins to trap iron so that it just doesn't sink. A blood protein called hemoglobin transfers iron to every single cell in your body. Hence, if you're low in iron, your hemoglobin will fall because you can't make hemoglobin without iron. Now, iron gives your blood that red color color when you bleed. Now myoglobin is another iron binding protein that provides oxygen to your muscles and healthy connective tissue. The other day my friend called me up to tell me that she was super worried about her son because he had an elevated myoglobin level. Now he was actually working out a couple days before the lab draw and at that time he was complaining his arms were really sore. 
So I asked her a couple questions. Is his urine dark? Does he have blood in his urine? Is he having fevers? Is he extremely tired or weak? Does he have nausea, vomiting, or abdominal pain? And her answer was no to all of those questions. And he was actually feeling better by the time she called me. So those are all good signs. And whatever insult happened probably was resolving. And the day after, he had his labs repeated and his myoglobin was nicely coming down. Now he likely injured his muscles working out and damaged muscle cells will leak myoglobin into the blood. But the problem with myoglobin is that super high levels are actually very harmful for the kidneys. Hence, we aggressively hydrate people after muscle injury, partially to help with keeping the kidneys alive. So I had suggested that he drink lots of water, especially because we are in an intravenous fluid shortage at this point in our time. That means hospitals, surgical centers can't access enough saline to support our healthcare system. And this shortage is actually affecting just about every single hospital across the country. It's not just surgery that it's affecting. Saline is actually a life-saving intervention for not just when you're dehydrated, but also when you have sepsis. It's super important for outpatient procedures like screening colonoscopies. Now, the thing is, I don't get why we don't have multiple backups for our medical supplies, considering the fact that healthcare spending is 17% of our country's gross domestic product. So the take-home message, folks, is don't get yourself dehydrated, especially if you are on an iron supplement, because that's going to lead to constipation. And if you get dehydrated, it can lead to muscle damage and kidney damage. And then we're also in short supply of saline. So when you eat red meat, you're actually eating both heme and non-heme iron. Have you seen what happens to a nail when you leave it out in the rain? It turns orangish red or rusty, that's oxidation. And when you eat red meat that's been sitting on the store shelf, it turns a shade of brown because the myoglobin gets oxidized and rusty too. Now fresh meat should be vibrant and red, but within a few hours of air exposure, myoglobin will start to oxidize. If the tissue has more myoglobin, that will make it more noticeable. This is why beef turns more brown than chicken. Now dark brown brownish red or grayish color indicates spoilage. Definitely don't eat that meat. Have you ever eaten a piece of lean steak without added flavor, sugar, seasoning, salt, pepper, oil? Just cook plain? You probably wouldn't eat that because it wouldn't taste good. Red meat tastes metallic because of the iron. That's why people add salt. Salt competes with the metallic receptors on your tongue, so it covers up that metallic taste of iron in meat. Brown or oxidized meat, it actually tastes worse. And to get around this, more salt is added. And that's why your TV dinners, pre-marinated meats, sausages, and other older preserved meats are so salty. Convenient foods made by your fast food restaurants and supermarkets, they also use salt to cover up the metallic taste because you don't know how long that meat's been around in their factory. Older meats are often made into ground meat. The older the meat, the more germs you will have in it. Do you understand why food outbreaks commonly happen with patty and other processed deli meats? Even though red meat is the most well-known iron-rich food, it's actually not the food with the highest concentration of iron per ounce. That food is actually number two, the oyster, which is twice as much iron as beef. But oysters don't turn brown, and that's because they don't have myoglobin, but they do have ferritin. Oysters need a lot of iron because they live in extremely low oxygen environments, tidal flats. Remember how I told you bacteria love iron? Well, oysters, they house another siderophilic bacteria called Vibrio vulnificus. Unfortunately, people with underlying liver disease or reduce immunity, such as people with hemochromatosis, with diabetes, the elderly, or other immunocompromised conditions, they can all have deadly consequences if they come into contact with Vibrio bacteria, either from their food or even from walking along the beach if they have broken skin. And this is because the liver plays a critical role in your immune defense and usually filters toxins, including pathogens from your blood. The liver can't do that when it's sick. The other problem is that when people with liver disease, they often actually have higher iron levels, which are perfect for iron-loving bacteria to grow and multiply. Unfortunately, those infected with Vibrio infections they often present an acute or critical sepsis or widespread inflammation. And if you have liver disease, number one, you should not be swimming in the ocean. And number two, it's not a good idea to eat oysters, especially raw oysters. So I went to Boston's Children's Museum over a decade ago, and I remember seeing the perfect oyster fish tank exhibit. One tank was cloudy and murky. It didn't have any oysters. The tank with oysters had crystal clear water. Do you know why? 
That's correct, because they are filter feeders. They are filtering all the trash out of the tank water, just like my mechanical fish tank filters. Now, I used to have a fish tank with all sorts of freshwater fish, like guppies, and I really hated changing the fish tank filters because it was always stinky, slimy, and black. So when you eat an oyster or really any filter feeder, you're essentially eating the trash cans of the ocean. And when I became an infectious disease physician and started seeing patients getting sick from eating oysters, well... I stopped eating cooked oysters because it's really never cooked long enough to kill all the germs. Now, I've never eaten any raw oysters and I have watched people do it. It's a really popular dish, but the dish always comes with a warning sign that says you can get really sick if you eat that dish. Now, if you think about it, the oyster has so many different trash cans. Every single filter feeder is a trash can. Hence, if you like seafood, which is number three, shrimp, crabs, lobsters, well, you're basically eating trash collectors. They're not much different than oysters. Hence, I never eat raw sushi. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, then obviously red meat and seafood is out of the question. And luckily for you and everybody else, we can get all the iron we need from plants. And the bonus is you can also get phytonutrients, fibers, and other micronutrients that are not found in animal products. Now, did you know that your processed grain is actually fortified with iron, which is number four? So that breakfast cereal has 100% per serving of the RDA of iron, which is 18 milligrams per day. Now, ironically, healthier whole grains don't have as much iron, and their amount is about 6% of the RDA. So how did iron become fortified in grains? Well, it turns out iron deficiency anemia has been a public health crisis for many countries since ancient times. Ancient Egypt and Greece, they notice an improvement in symptoms of fatigue and pallor and paleness by giving people liver. Of course, they didn't know why. And I mentioned earlier that the liver collects iron. Thus, liver, which is number five, is another rich source of iron. Now, it has five to seven milligrams of iron per three ounces, depending on the animal. I personally have never liked liver. I taste super metallic to me. And I just explained why it's not a good idea to eat filter feeders because these filter animals trap toxins. Well, your liver is a number one filter that gets the first pass to trap all the toxins that an animal eats. So in addition to getting a good dose of iron, you're also gonna get a good dose of heavy metals, pesticides, medications, mold toxins, and whatever else that the animal was exposed to, probably some plastics. To me, food is a risk-benefit ratio. I prefer to get my nutrients less contaminated from lower risk sources. During the Industrial Revolution in the 20th century, diet quality actually started to decline. Today, the vast majority of people in America is even worse when it comes to diet quality. We're eating too much processed, homogenous foods. Now, I could understand the lack of diversity during the Great Depression when people had no access to any food. The Great Depression in America lasted a decade, 10 years, right before World War II. And during World War II, military recruits were found to be malnourished and unproductive and tired due to being anemic because they had just spent the last decade in the Great Depression. Now today, people are still malnourished, missing a variety of micronutrients, even though we have an abundance of food. What we have is an overnourished micronutrient undernutrition problem. And what people don't realize is that the rate limiting step to process all those calories people are eating are micronutrients. Now, during World War II, the military needed a quick solution for the recruits, so they began purchasing iron-rich flour to feed their soldiers. Getting a government contract is like hitting a gold mine for any company, right? Look at Boeing and SpaceX. Government contracts incentivize processed food companies to mass produce processed micronutrient fortified flours. In 1943, FDR signed into law the War Food Order, which required all processed flour to be enriched with iron. And during that time, ready to eat cereals, they also were fortified with iron. So this is the birth of our ultra processed food culture and how private companies became the leaders in nutrition in America. Do you know anybody who can't cook or do laundry? Hey, that was me. I didn't know how to cook when I left for college because my mom always cooked for me. And that was a problem with how the US government solved our malnutrition crisis. Instead of teaching the US citizens to look for nutrient dense foods, they decided to make it easy for everybody, brainless, just go eat ultra processed food. We're gonna fortify it, we'll take care of you. What they didn't realize was that when you mess with the food matrix, you change people's taste buds, their hormones, their brain chemistry, 
their gut microbiome, and you're creating an addiction to processed foods. This is the reason for our national and global health crisis. Everybody's overeating calories. Now, in other words, fulfilling your iron needs with processed foods is just not a good idea if you want to be metabolically healthy. And the most nutritious and economical food on the planet are beans. Number six, which has more iron per serving than beef. Now, white beans, like all plants, only have non-heme iron, which is actually a better form of iron, even though heme iron is more efficiently absorbed by the body. The difference is maybe five to 15%. That probably doesn't make many sense to you. Why would you want to eat a form of iron that is not as efficiently absorbed. How about inflammation? Heme iron actually causes a boatload of inflammation. You see, iron is a toxic metal because it rusts, it's very reactive. So too much and it'll be poison and too little, your metabolism gets all messed up too. So for people who are super iron absorbers, like people with hemochromatosis, they need to avoid heme iron. So red meat and seafood, wouldn't be recommended. This is also why if your liver is inflamed or sick, eating iron-rich foods may not be a great idea. Hi friends, I am so thrilled that you wanna take charge of your health and take charge of your food. Now I know nutrition can be complex, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm here to support you in this lifelong journey. So if you point your camera app to this QR code, it'll take you to a link for a free handout that I created just for you. And if you like it, if you want to see other handouts, please go to the link in my show notes and then you can leave me your feedback on what I could do to help you in your journey. Okay, back to the video now. Did you know that the World Health Organization classifies red meat like beef to be a carcinogen? This is because of the heme iron. When your own blood cells rupture, heme iron is released and causes a whole cascade of inflammation, injuring blood vessels and tissues. So when you eat a big load of beef in your gut, those cells rupture and release a big load of heme iron that can also form into to N nitrosyl compounds causing DNA damage. One of them is called methyl nitrosyurea, which is a known carcinogen. And this is the same stuff that is made by smoking cigarettes. And this is also known to alter sperm DNA. Now, these are all observational studies as it is unethical to randomize people to smoke. Now, despite not having randomized controlled trials on smoking, most people agree that cigarette smoking is hazardous to your health. Even smokers won't argue with that point. Have you seen the recent headlines in which colon cancer rates in young adults are rising despite declining smoking rates? What about the articles on cows and how they're the most environmentally polluting animals amongst all the other animals eaten as food? In addition, red meat increases your risk of diabetes. Now, the earth, the cows, and your health, they're all going to benefit if you eat less beef. And many of you are actually trying and you're going plant-based and eating plant-based alternative patties with beans injected with heme iron and it tastes pretty similar to red meat but I'm not sure that those veggie burgers are going to pan out being made with heme iron. It may not be the healthiest option in the long run but I admit short-term studies actually show it is less inflammatory compared to red meat. In your body iron is actually found in hemoglobin, myoglobin and stored as a protein called ferritin just like the ones in the oyster. There's also hemosiderin. Now myoglobin, remember, is found in your muscle and hemoglobin, ferritin, and hemosiderin, they're actually the ones found in the blood, the bone marrow, the liver, and spleen. You actually have another protein and that's called transferrin that can bind to iron and transport it to wherever body part needs more iron. Now remember, iron needs all these proteins because it can't dissolve in your blood, right? It just sinks and that's why it always needs to be bound to proteins. Now the key to understanding iron is that you generally won't lose much iron after you've built up your reserves unless number one you're bleeding or number two your iron is trapped in your organs like let's say your liver. And for women this happens every month on their menses and this is why it's not uncommon for women to be anemic especially if they have heavy and irregular menses. And ultimately if you are low in iron 
your hemoglobin level will eventually decline and then you will have a condition called iron deficiency anemia. And this means your red blood cells are smaller than normal because they don't have enough hemoglobin. The size of your red blood cells is called the mean corpuscular volume or MCV. So if you look at your lab test and you have a low MCV, then that supports a diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. It may not always be that, but if you were diagnosed with that, then it should agree. But the most efficient marker for iron deficiency anemia is a serum ferritin test. Ferritin can detect early iron deficiency even before you become anemic. And in general, a serum ferritin concentration below 30 micrograms per liter suggests that a person actually has iron deficiency. But ferritin is really non-specific. So if you have super high ferritin levels, it doesn't necessarily mean you have super high iron levels, but it does mean you have some kind of inflammation. And high iron levels can also cause high inflammation. Now, if I've just confused you, no worries. Go see your own medical doctor who can help you sort all this out. And if they're confused, go see hematologists. They are the experts of iron metabolism. Now here's the RDA for iron. Now the problem with beans is that beans take some preparation to make because you have to pre-soak them for a few hours before you cook them to get rid of some of the phytic acid, which actually prevents you from absorbing the iron. So don't skip the soaking step. Preferably soak them overnight for about 10 to 12 hours or at least four hours before you cook it. And you want to pour out that water to get rid of the phytic acid, which is soluble in water. Beans also have to be cooked well until tender because they just simply taste better. Otherwise, they will still have some phytic acid as well as lectins, which can both inhibit your iron absorption. Now, there's lots of social media influencers online who make a big deal about phytic acid and lectin. I'm not sure why, because nobody eats raw beans, now, except for a group of people in Japan who wanted to lose weight. So they toasted some raw ground beans, then ground it to a powder, sprinkled it on their rice, and they learned the hard way that that's not something that they should be doing because a number of them got hospitalized. Generally, you have to cook your beans until they're tender enough to be mashed with the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And when you soak them, you're in essence trying to sprout or germinate the bean. Germination reduces phytic acid because hydrating the bean activates phytase, an enzyme that degrades phytic acid. So if you left your bean and kept changing the water over a few days, you probably see some tiny little sprouts emerging from your beans. And some people, they actually like fermented beans, which have microorganisms like bacteria and yeast that will break down the phytic acid even more. And by the way, it's also not a good idea to eat calcium rich foods like fortified milk, yogurts and cheeses, when you're trying to absorb iron. And this is because calcium competes with iron for absorption. Oh, and if you're a drinker and you like teas and coffees with your meal, well, they contain high levels of tannin, which can also decrease iron absorption. In other words, don't drink tea or coffee during your meals if you're trying to increase your iron levels. When I'm in a hurry, I actually like lentils because you don't need to soak them. This is number seven. They are super easy to cook. Lentils vary in iron depending on the shade or how much fiber your lentils have. I find lentils to be tender and soft within 20 to 30 minutes depending on if it's split or whole. And if you wanna increase your absorption of iron with any meal, add some vitamin C rich foods, such as red bell peppers, green leafy vegetables, and tomatoes. Vitamin C increases the absorption of iron. But my fastest and favorite iron rich bean to eat is tofu, number eight. It's actually made out of soybeans, an excellent source of iron. Now firmer tofu has more iron than soft tofu. I love tofu because you literally can just pour it out of the box, rinse it, and then add it to whatever food you wanna eat or just eat it like that with some seasoning. So you can eat it hot or cold. One year, my friend just had a baby, so I brought dinner over to her and her family. I made pasta with tomato sauce, which is number nine. So a cup of stewed tomatoes have four milligrams of iron. And oftentimes people wanna add cream to their sauces, so I added some pureed cashew which is number 10. One ounce of cashews has four milligrams of iron. Now, if I were to start with a pre-made spaghetti sauce, I would add a little bit of sweetness with it in fruit. And you can puree some raisins, number 11. That's actually a bonus number. A quarter cup of red seedless raisins has about one milligram of iron. Now, if that doesn't sound like much, it's about the same amount as three ounce serving size of turkey, chicken, hard boiled egg, or pork. I've also made a lasagna with tofu instead of meat. You can grate the tofu, chop the tofu, crumble the tofu. It 
kind of works a little bit like cheese, except it's not sticky. It just also doesn't melt like cheese when you put it on the heat and really doesn't have the texture or saturated fat like cheese or mammalian estrogen hormones because soy or tofu is a plant, unlike animal products like cheeses and dairy. Now, soy does have phytoestrogens, which have actually been shown to be protective against mammalian estrogen. And that's beneficial for estrogen-responsive cancers. Now, if you want to learn more about that, watch the next video.